Uh, hi guys, and welcome back to part two of our interview with Rosh, who is a current medical student in the English program of uh, University of Milan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he studies medicine in English and he's at the IMAT. And this is part two. In part one, we kind of really did a deep dive into the university. And in this part of the interview, we want to talk more about like Rosh personally and how he prepared for the IMAT and his opinions on medicine. And then we're going to do a bit more information on the city because we both believe that students should pick their choice based on the city and like how it's going to fit them as a student rather than the university itself. Most so definitely. with that being said, Rosh, would you like to give us a brief interview? Uh, interview, sorry, a introduction. Brief introduction to yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name's Rosh. I um, I am a 28 year old medical student in Milan. Um, prior to coming to university here, I was actually a graduate from another university in the UK, so I do have a bit of a background there. Otherwise, um, coming to Milan is the first time that I have lived in uh, another country outside of my home and uh, studied in uh, a country that is not of my mother tongue. So a lot of challenges there and, um, you know, med school is a six year program. So like Sarah said, it's really important to make sure that you get the city that you want, not just the university because different strokes for different folks. But if you don't go to a university, uh, like a city that you like, then you're going to be in pain for six years. So yeah, that's, that wasn't background about me. That was just <laughs> background about choices, but there's not really much to say otherwise. So should we get into the questions? I mean, I, I think it's just really important to emphasize because I just know from talking to students all the time, they're always like, what's the best medical university? Like, what are the rankings? And I just think it's really important for matter. students to like pick a city based on their personality rather than like, the so like, I think you just emphasizing oh, yeah. it is just really. No, I wholeheartedly to agree. I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, um, Okay, for me, for instance, I'm a country bumpkin. I uh, grew up in a, <laughs> a small city, um, and I really love the countryside. But um, after studying at my previous university, I realized the beauties of living in a city because there's always something to do. There's always something to see, um, always people around. You can make friends much easier, I feel, in a city uh, situation than in a, in a countryside situation, or at least there's a higher population density so that makes it a bit easier so for me those things were important um, amongst other things that we'll get into um, but you know you may like the quiet life you may want to go somewhere that's a bit quieter than if you come to a city you'll be going to be uh, frustrated for for a long time because of that yeah. so you said that you uh, already did another degree before you came to Italy basically mm -hmm. so the first question I wanted to actually ask you was that uh, like, how did you study for the IMAT? And if you were going back to before you sat the IMAT, would you do anything differently or would you advise like a student currently preparing? So like, given your current background, could you like just talk a bit about like the IMAT and your choices and how you studied, et cetera? Et cetera? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, um, whilst, whilst I was preparing for the IMAT, I was preparing for uh, two other exams known as the GAMSAT and the UK CAT, um, which are two other aptitude tests for entry into medicine courses in the UK. So um for me actually the IMAT was a bit of a back burner a bit of a backup um because I was studying for these other um other tests which are um respectively a bit more difficult I think I can say um but the testing modalities are also completely different so I did do some pre preparation for the IMAT it just wasn't as intense as those other two exams and to prepare for the IMAT I basically looked over my A level um, A-level biology, chemistry, and I had to pretty much teach myself uh, A-level physics as well, um, and maths a little bit um, to 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 study for that. So um, if I was to go back and do the IMAT again, there's not too much I would do differently. I know that they've changed the format a little bit now so that there's general knowledge. So I would, um, if there's available at the time, practice papers, I would do the practice papers, see what the general knowledge section is all about, like what kind of questions they're asking, from which areas of general knowledge that they're asking, like is it more humanities based, is it more history based, all of this kind of stuff. And then just kind of focus in my studies there. And the same with biology and chemistry and physics. I mean, there's always things that they're going to ask, like organic chemistry to some extent, they're always gonna ask like cell cycles and, and you know, there's, there's these points that you really wanna get down well because it'll make up 
you know, a lot of the exam. I'm not going to throw a statistic out there, but it's going to make up a lot of the exam. So you want to make sure that you focus up on those. Okay. So yeah. Okay. The idea yeah. I mean, there's not really much else to say. I mean, it's it's the IMAT has a syllabus, right? There is a syllabus for the IMAT test. They they tell you what's going to be on the examination. Yeah. Yeah. There correctly. is, but there's always like, uh, you know, like okay, for example. Not that I really want to get into this, but to just give a brief example, like for me, when I was preparing for the IMAT, for me, it was like strategizing how I was going to maximize my score uh, mm, instead of mm. like covering everything. So like say for like physics and uh, maths, it wasn't worth for me covering the whole syllabus for physics and maths. So I just went through every single past paper, saw which topics they asked the most, prepared on those topics so that if those questions came up, I would only answer those. And if they didn't, mm. then I wouldn't, so that I wouldn't get like negative marking. So like I yeah, went into true. it much more strategically. So I think when people like want to ask about like IMAP preparation, it's generally like, because there's no secret formula, like it's just, there you know isn't. what's going to come up and you're just going to study for it. <laughs> exactly. uh, so regarding like, uh, you, you picked Milan and you mentioned before that you did it because it's considered like a lot more metropolitan. So yeah. could you talk a bit more about like, why you chose uh, the university in particular and like do you regret it not so much university wise but like also city wise uh, like what's your favorite thing and what's your least favorite thing about your choice okay so um, yeah like, like like you said the reason I chose Milan was because it's metropolitan in nature um, I really wanted to go to a a bit of a honeypot area a place that wasn't just um, you know the same status quo obviously I wanted there to be a bit more um, diversity i can say uh for personal reasons um and that was a good choice i i i really think that coming to milan was a very good choice it's had its it's had its ups and downs i'm not going to um to negate that but it uh it has been a very enjoyable uh, overall um the things i love about the city is that like i've said before there's there's so much to do here um I, I really like walking, I really like exploring. So there's a lot of nooks and crannies of the city that I haven't seen still. Um, and I do a lot of walking around areas that I've not been around before. There's a lot of green spaces that are really well curated, a lot of parks, a lot of, um, a lot of yeah, a lot of parks and greenery, uh, which you need if you're living in a city because, um, you know, concrete can only get so appealing. Uh, the things I don't like about the city is generally the price. The pricing can be very difficult. Um, like eating out can be very expensive. Going to the cinema, and I mean, I know going to the cinema is quite expensive anywhere these days, but here it seems particularly so. Um, and the <laughs> the nature of the Milanese, like it, Italy, has a beautiful reputation for very warm, hospitable people, but Milan, being a city, it can be a bit um, cold sometimes not just the weather, but the, the general atmosphere sometimes as well. Um, but other than that, there's there's nothing really negative that I can really say about the city um, for people who want to apply, apart from the pricing aspect, because I think a lot of people are priced out of studying here because it is uh, like rents can be very expensive, food can be very expensive. Um, but there's a lot of help from the university for that if you need it. So, uh, yeah. so, like, if there was a specific type of student that you say, like, that you would recommend uh, Milan in particular for, like, what would, what would be the like, if you imagined like a student that you think would be ideal for uh, Milan? Like, I know this sounds like a really weird question. So while it's you're a very thinking difficult about it, question. Like, <laughs> it's difficult but like if someone asked me that just for example I would say that like it needs to be a student who kind of like I, I would say like almost thrives in chaos like in Rome like you know like <laughs> okay. our bus is set on fire and like you kind of need to like enjoy that chaos and like when you told me that skiing is very common in Milan I was like okay like so Milan is perfect for like people who want to live in a city but also have access to like skiing like or mm -hmm. snowboarding and so like would you say it's like adventurous types or like more metropolitan types because it is a busy city so like what type of student do you think like milan is perfect for many different types actually like you said uh, skiing snowboarding snow sports in general fantastic place to go if you're really interested in that but also milan is like the fashion capital of italy so if you're very into fashion and design and 
uh, brands, then it's also a fantastic place to go because, I mean, we have Fashion Week for men and women once, up to, well, twice every year. Um, and design-wise, there's a lot of architecture and there's a lot of design and museum exhibitions going on. So there's a lot of cultural things to see as well. So if you're a person who likes to go to see art exhibits or if you like to go to museums, there's so much for you to do here. Like, I haven't been to all the museums here at all. And, um, like, I, I try to go to one, like, at least at least uh, <laughs> twice a term, I would say. Probably a bit more, if, but, you know, with COVID, I can't. So um, on top of that, uh, I think someone who thrives in chaos would also do well here. Also someone who can thrive in both quite hot weather and quite cold weather. We have uh, both ends of the scale here, so uh, you have to be adaptable as well. Like You have to be able to adapt to the chaos and the conditions that Milan is going to throw at you, because she will. She will throw all she's got at you. So it's actually, uh, I love that you mentioned the weather, because once we get to the city part, that's actually going to be one of the one of the first questions I was going to ask you, because I think like weather is such a important consideration that people, people don't even think about it because they're just thinking about like, Oh, what university do I want? Instead of thinking like you have to spend six years mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, I was, uh, when I was initially making my decision, I was really stuck between Milan and Rome as well. But now in my fifth year, I'm so happy that I ended up in Rome because we have milder winters compared to Milan's oh, yeah. winters. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I am crazy. struggling in Rome's winter at the moment at eight degrees. And I know Milan goes much, much, much colder. Yeah. So, nice. uh, so I'm really yeah, glad it's, that you mentioned it, that. Like, I mean, just, just uh, two weeks ago, we got about five four to five inches of snow which is uh yeah. you know a lot of snow for for italy in general but especially for milan we don't get that that's a crazy amount of snow that i've never seen that here before uh but coming from the uk um anything's better than what i am used to so. <laughs> i mean like i have also heard uh my nordic friends tell me that uh there are there is no bad weather only bad clothes but i still refuse to that, believe that that's a like, great saying actually no i agree like, i agree I, I i still don't think i would have been able to hack uh the winters in milan but just before we move on to the city like i just wanted to explore a little bit more about medicine because I also see sometimes students not only considering like where to go for medicine in English in Italy, but also like is medicine the right choice for them versus mm. engineering. So like, would you recommend medicine to students? And as hard as it sounds, would you recommend medicine mm. in Italy then to students as well? Oh, that's that's a very subjective question and answer um i mean i'm hoping like by the end of this interview series we will have done like 20 students so getting all of their subjective answers will lead to something more mm. yeah i mean i i can say that at least in my year group um a handful of people who came into the course reverent that they're going to do medicine they're going to be a doctor for the rest of their life now want to go and do something else um I can also say the same of people in the medical field back home. So I don't know whether it's uh, a question, at least of, of doing medicine in Italy as doing medicine in general. So I think you really have to, to know. And the only way that you can know prior to getting into med school is doing a lot of observations and shadowing um, in your local hospital, if you're allowed to, um, because it's the only way that you can know truly the, the things that are required of you because the responsibility is like the common denominator that I've seen. The, the pressure and the responsibility that comes with that, uh, sorry, the, the, the responsibility and the pressure that comes with that is, is, is a big deterrent for practicing medicine amongst medical students um, in fear of burning out, in fear of messing up and potentially causing harm. So um, if, you're, if you feel confident, do it and make sure you see it through to the end. Um, Compared to engineering, I would say coming to Milan is also a nice place to do engineering. Uh, uh, the Politecnico here, I think, has a great um, engineering course. Um, and I don't know that subject matter too well, but I imagine it would be less responsibility and less stress. I'm not sure. Um, I think engineering could be quite uh, a big responsibility. I mean you're engineering the things that people are using and you know going to be in so there's a lot of danger inherently there so i don't know um it's quite it's quite 
a uh, subjective question. And if you have that question, then I think you have to do a lot of soul searching and you have to do whatever you can to find the answer, which is, you know, going to get the experience at least of what doctors are doing, uh, talking, uh, maybe find a mentor, maybe find someone who is in the medical field and, and, and can give you uh, conversations, take them out for a coffee and, and find out uh, what their um, mentality is. Because I know I had a lot of, uh, medical friends and you know sisters of friends who are in the medical profession telling me not to go into medicine once uh, when, once they knew I was applying um, yeah it's 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 yeah. really funny actually because before I went in I refused to listen to anyone who told me that I shouldn't go into medicine and, and now you're like don't do it don't I, do it yeah it's like I don't regret going into medicine but I Not do regret that at the time I didn't feel like I had another option I don't know if mm. that makes sense. Like, no, okay, yeah, I, I regret not. I, I maybe regret not looking at what else I could do because, I, like, I, I think we spoke about this before. But like you, I, I was kind of always in the mindset is, uh, of if I'm not going to do medicine, I have no idea what I want to do with my life. Um, that sense has changed a little bit, but um, I still want to do medicine. I still want to practice at least. For me personally, it was not that I didn't know what I wanted to do. For me, it's like I refuse to do anything else. Because, like, before I went into medicine, I actually had a career in Facebook. Mm. Uh, I was, like, on a career track. And I was still every day, like, no, I still want medicine. Like, I, I can't do anything but medicine. It has mm. to be medicine. Um, yeah, so I, was, I was like, I, it's something I have to do. It has to be my last yeah. work. <laughs> but now, like, when I sit to student, like, when I talk to students, I'm like, listen, like, there are so many other things that you might end up enjoying. Like, you don't, this isn't the only thing. And they're just basically like, oh, like rip to you, but I'm different. <laughs> like, yeah. I keep I keep quoting I this theme, but yeah. Um, but okay, so the last thing I want to ask is because I try to emphasize this to all students, and that is to uh, learn, try to learn Italian before they get here. Oh yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. would this be a recommendation you have as well, or how would you recommend students go about it, or like if you had to emphasize a point about learning Italian? Uh, Oh, also because, sorry, your university also requires a Italian level before you go into clinical. So could you talk a little yeah. bit about that and like the whole like language experience, everything, basically? Mm. So, yeah, I actually looked this up because I messed it up on um, the podcast that we have together. Um, you need a B2 level Italian prior to getting into your third year of med school. So if you pass all of your exams, but you don't have a B2 level of Italian, you won't be able to go into the clinical years. So um, from second to third year um so for me uh and i want to talk because my italian the level of my italian is not great but for me learning the language of where you're going to live for six years is not is not only a matter of uh, necessity but it's also a matter of respect like um this country is giving will give you the opportunity to study the thing that you will do for the rest of your life and train you to do so and if you don't want to learn Italian, and it, it's, you know, it can, it, that, that to me is disrespectful. But more than that, for your own personal, um, for your own personal achievements or, or studying, should I say, once you get into those clinical years, if you do not know Italian, you will be so far behind your peers that it may be difficult to catch up. Because when you go into clinics, you're you're not hearing all the conversations that doc doctors are having with one another and doctors are trying to tell you um, information in Italian a lot. So if you don't know Italian, then you're losing out, I would say, a good chunk of your clinical learning through, um, through those clerkships that are held um, from years three to six. And if you're not getting that experience, then you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, you're wasting the doctor's time. Um, so download Duolingo. Download uh, Rosetta Stone if it's free. I don't think it's free, but Duolingo is free. I did it before coming to um, to Milan. Um, I completed the app for Italian, and that helped me so much in my Italian lessons. Not necessarily in my Italian practice, but definitely in the lessons to learn the actual way that you should speak. It definitely helped a lot. Yeah, I, I think it's really, really important that you start before you get here, because I also kind of very foolishly believed that I would learn through immersion. I was just kind of like, oh, like if I'm just if I'm living in Italy, like obviously I'm going to learn Italian, like I don't have to put that much extra effort into it. And I was wrong. 
And mm -hmm. I know a lot of like of my classmates now, despite being here for five years, like they can't speak like more than two sentences of Italian. Like they they they, they can be like, how much does this cost, and how do I go here? But uh, that would be the extent of it. And really, like you're gonna miss out so much in your clinical experience if you if you don't learn Italian um, early on. So I'm glad that you kind of had the same advice. Like get started. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can start small. When once you get here, um, there are even uh, crash courses you can do. We have a group of um, Russian students who have who have transferred onto our course from a Russian university because we had we used to have at least a partnership with a university in Russia. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, very cool, very cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they came, but they didn't lick a Italian, and they went on crash courses for like I think a semester or two. And now I would say they're as good as me, if not a little bit better. Wow. Okay. That's very impressive. Yeah. So th that's an option for like doing crash courses uh, once you do mm -hmm. get here. But like, I mean, yeah, and that I, I wanted to add on to the topic that you said. Uh -huh. I wanted to add, add on to the thing that you said is that um, um, in your first two years, you are doing some very heavy and difficult exams and you don't want to then be learning a language on top of that because oh, you'll have your mind focused on science and then a language which can be quite at least for me that's quite difficult uh, juggling those two things so um, if you have studied Italian beforehand that makes it a little bit easier yeah true so I mean just start as early as you can start as basic mm -hmm. as you can but just make sure that you uh, get on top of it but so now let's talk a little bit about the cities because I'm from Rome, you're from Milan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I feel like we have we would have kind of the most to say about the cities because they're so big uh, in mm -hmm. general. But let's I would really like to do like a really good understanding of Milan as a city, uh, starting kind of like with the population, the pollution, like the noise level. Like I'm not saying like the exact numbers. I'm just okay, saying like <laughs> I don't know. In, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know the population of Rome. I just mean like in general feel and mm. how this would like, I know it's also really hard to answer with COVID times, but like if you can kind of think back to like pre-COVID times, like how it affected your day to day, like commute to the university, like how did it affect when you went into the hospital? Because, you know, like, did you get tourists when you were in the hospital? Like, mm -hmm. so like, yeah, I know these are like really vague and big questions, but it's just to like, it's what I wish I knew before I was going into uh, the IMAT. So, yeah. So I would I would say that Milan is quite populated. It is not densely so. Um, it, it, again, it depends on um, sorry, it depends on the area of the city. Like there are some areas of the city which like you can't walk on the pavement because there's so many people. But then you go to um, like. Costa Buenos Aires, where there's a lot of people, but you can walk around pretty freely because there's wide paving. So um, I would say the hustle and bustle is not too bad. Um, I wouldn't put it up there with some places like London or um, New York, definitely not. So, um, but it's not exactly quiet. Um, Yeah, yeah. So that's for the population. And then for like the rest of the city, um, people here are quite fashionable. So if that's something that you <laughs> you worry about, then uh, there's that. Um, transport links are quite good. There's a lot of uh, ways to get around the city. Um, the, 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 the card that you get for transport through uh, something called the ATM, the Agent so, wait, Transport. Wait, wait. Uh, it it's not that I want to cut you off, but I want to do a whole portion on the transport in Milan. So I kind oh, okay. of just want to we'll focus. Time. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, this is the problem oh, with no, me asking no. such open-ended questions. Uh, but no, I want to do a whole fast. portion on like the transport, the cost of living, the weather, the healthcare. Mm -hmm. But like now I kind of just want to get like a general feel for like how busy is the city? Because like, again, not to compare it to Rome, but like for us, like Rome is really densely populated, especially mm. around tourist season. Like it is unbearably packed. Mm. The streets are packed. The metro is packed. It's awful. Um, so like I kind of no, just uh, wanted to get like and how that like kind of contributes to like the noise levels of the areas you live in and like kind of like the pollution and like, do you know, like this is more like just the city. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. OK, so for 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 
sorry to come back to transport, but like, for instance, when I'm going on the metro, I never find that I'm like shoulder to shoulder with people like packed like a sardine. I'm not yeah. really, you know, fighting for a space. I may be fighting for a seat uh, on the metro, but I'm not fighting to stand up or even get onto the metro. Um, walking around, there's not really too much people around. Um, noise levels, it's not too bad because a lot of the clubs and stuff are outside of the city. So <clears throat> the, the, that kind of ambient noise you don't really have to worry about unless you're in certain locations but even then um noise levels can be very varied because um the buildings here are quite old a lot of them were built built in the 50s so like the walls are very thin um so you can hear people like next door talking um like in my apartment for instance i'm pretty sure my neighbors would be able to hear me right now if they were the home but um i, I hear that problem a lot with some other people as well um then, I mean, during tourist season, we don't really have a tourist season per se, because unless you like city breaks, Milan isn't a place that people think of when they're like, oh, I'm going to go to Italy for vacation, uh, which is, you know, quite nice, because that means in the summer periods that you can um, you can explore the city if you want, or if you want to get out, then uh, you don't have to, I mean, it's, yeah, you don't have to, um, like, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say fight for transport to go places, but you don't have to do that anyway. So, <laughs> um, I mean, I think for the general feel, it's, yeah, it's not it's not too loud, not too quiet. I'd say it's a happy medium. Because like, I've been to Rome and, it, yeah, it can be quite chaotic. It can be, like, people honking car horns every, like, five minutes. Here it's not th that bad. Yeah, so like I, I would I kind of imagine Milan. Well, what what I usually hear about Milan is that it's like a calmer Rome, where hmm. yeah, um, yeah, is kind of what I hear about it. That it's like still kind of like metropolitan, and you get that like city life that you need, but it's not like overcrowded. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. I would say the same. It's not overcrowded what, at all. Whereas Rome, especially during like tourist season, I would say that the city center is overcrowded like it, it doesn't really impact your day-to-day -day as a student because it's not like the university is in the city i mean it's in the city center but like you're still like a you know one two hour walk like you would have to yeah. walk for one hour to get to the city center have um, you have we ever been in rome during august no well august everywhere is closed uh, i think all of italy okay. just goes out of business yeah, during same, august. I, I thought just everyone in milan just left milan during august to go oh. to different places in in italy but if it's the same in rome then yeah definitely not no it's it's this thing that they call i think ferragosto or something like that where uh during august most of italy completely closes down like restaurants aren't open shops aren't open yeah. stores aren't open so like they all go to i like to the beach houses and like Puglia and the nice uh, places like that. But for us, tourist season is especially around April because Easter and we have Vatican City. So mm -hmm. it's like April is like, I think when it's absolutely the busiest and I try to avoid going to city center or like I, I avoid the Vatican area uh, yeah. during April. So since we were speaking about August, uh, August here is incredibly hot and humid. You can't breathe. <sighs> You stick to furniture. I actually think it's like the seventh circle of hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. least in, this is what Dante in, was writing about for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So could you talk like about the weather in Milan and perhaps to give people uh, an idea, like not only temperature wise, but like how people would dress uh, like I just asked just so they can understand kind of like how many layers you need to wear because yeah. it's kind of hard when you say like oh it's 20 degrees and you're kind of like okay like 20 degrees is kind of warm but then if you consider like in fall it's not that warm like I don't know if that makes sense so no no it makes, it makes perfect sense when someone close the number, yeah. so yeah. I mean um like this winter we've had a really cold winter um I think it's hit zero if not gone below by a couple of degrees and then in the summer um, I think we hit mid thirties even, and uh, being close to the Alps, Milan is really humid pretty much all year round. Like during the winter months, we even have this dense, thick fog, and you can't see like two meters ahead of you, and it's super cold and it's so wet. The air is wet; you can like feel it, um, it which is strange because I'm always used to thinking of humidity and the heat, but humidity and the cold is just as 
odd. Uh, but we, we do have, um, you know, very polar opposites when it comes to the weather. We have very cold weather, very hot weather, and especially in the summer, it's, it's unbearable sometimes. Like, um, I, I often just go to my friend's house for the AC because uh, having the window open just acclimatizes both rooms together. There's no respite from the heat. Um, and like you described, it's thick, it's clammy, it's horrible. Um, like I, I sometimes take an extra shirt out with me because I'll sweat through one of them. Um, oh, and man. the mosquitoes, the amount you get bitten here is crazy. Um, and nothing seems to keep them at bay. <clears throat> Just mosquitoes everywhere um, during the summer months. Even now, actually, even a, a few. I had one buzzing around here earlier. But um, yeah, it can get quite bad. So on top of the heat, on top of the sweat, on top of the general uncomfortableness um you've got mosquitoes flying around so during the summer months i tend to just walk everywhere in um shirts and uh shorts or a tank top if i'm tank top the crop you know the wife beaters yeah so a crop top is when your stomach is showing yeah, so i don't so... think it's a crop top <laughs> i would make that work okay i could i could pull oh actually off. you know what you totally could pull that off i'm sorry i'm sorry i said anything it's so true <laughs> uh, and then in the winter um in the winter i'm wearing a lot of layers i even started wearing long johns because it's just that goddamn cold uh a lot of layers, a uh, thick jacket, beanie, scarf, everything, because um, even even um, those reusable, crackable hand warmers sometimes as well. And okay. I, run, I run quite hot, like my body temperature is usually quite warm. And even then I'm still freezing cold. Okay. Um, so I like just a second ago, I got up a average, like a year long average for uh, Milan. And yeah, the, the jump is quite big because when I looked up Rome's one a few weeks ago, like it wasn't flat, but like Milan's one is like a very clear, uh, like a huge hill where your <clears throat> negative on average is minus one during the during the winter. And then it's like over 30 degrees during the summer. Um, yeah. So it's not nice. So, yeah, I mean, no, so, OK, yeah. If you're used to one climate, you can bring all those clothes with you, and then you'll have to buy a bunch of others for the other climate. Uh, okay, so I mean, the nice thing about the winters, though, is is like you said, like in Milan, you can just like go skiing because obviously mm. you're close to the Alps and uh, whatnot. So if people are into that, if that sparks joy, that's something that they can do. <laughs> oh, it certainly um, does spark joy. Yeah, so then i'm just looking at my list of questions that i wanted to ask you so obviously like it's a big city but snowboarding is accessible like that is something that is really really cool and that is something like to do that is for every type of person uh does that make sense like yeah, sorry, yeah. like so like if i mean you can even still if have outdoorsy seen... people in the yeah. city so it, would you say that there's like a lot to do oh, and is it easy to tra even... travel to places Mm -hmm. Even yeah okay so there's a lot there's a lot to do there's uh, it's quite easy to travel to places as well like um, if you're an active person um, I know it can be quite difficult living in a city because it's not it's not easy to get out and do things when you're not when the thing isn't right there you know if you like to go hiking if you like to go skiing if you like to go BMX riding what have you um, even running running in this city is um, it can be a bit of a challenge depending on where you live. Um, for me, it's quite, I never go running anymore because it hurts my hip and I'm getting old, but there's a nice um, <clears throat> running path down one of the rivers down here. But if you are an active person, it's quite easy to get to the places that you need, that, that you want to do things at. So if you like to go hiking, you can go to the Alps and the, sun, the, the mountains in the summer months and just go hiking on a lot of trails up there and ski the same trails when the summer months come. Um, if you like to do BMXing or skateboarding, there are like four or five different parks around here, um, around the city. Um, if you like to go um, swimming, is not really a good one here. Like swimming pools are quite expensive here, and there's no outdoor swimming areas that are accessible and clean. Um, but other than that, there's a lot of sports activities you can do through the university. Yeah, but like, what about like 
okay, so you said there's like lots of museums, there's lots of mm-hmm. uh, like outdoor stuff, like parks, sports, but like what about like night nightclub life or like restaurant life? Like what mm-hmm. I'm really looking for is that like. The advantage of being in a big city is that there's really something for every type of person to do. So, mm. like in Milan, not only is there like a lot to do, but would you say that getting to these things and doing these things are easily accessible? Like yeah, it's... yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. I mean, it, like um, Lago di Como, for instance, uh, a nice place for a base to go and do skiing or whatever is is only an hour away, um, and I think it's less than five. Uh, it's probably a five euro return. Um, restaurants and stuff. Uh, again, there's a big um, dis- like range of places to eat. You can go to um, some really nice pizzerias or some really nice pasta ch- uh, pasta places for um, for really cheap, and you'll get a really nice meal. Or you can go to an expensive place and get a fantastic meal. Um, we have a great range of um, both quality and uh, price for restaurants. Um, some of some of the places can be a bit expensive for what you get if that makes sense like um i bought a stack of ribs the other day um, and they were a lot more expensive than they should have been i mean they were nice but um there's a lot of restaurants like that but restaurants here seem to um revolve around just a couple of food groups or uh, meal groups like pasta pizza sushi poke and uh, that's it that's 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 the main four that you'll get here um as for museums and such there's a lot there's a lot of museums a lot of art exhibits and um there's cards you can get to go visit each um like a, a group of them under the same ticket um and the nice thing about milan is that the comune or the the, the municipality they will hold events usually throughout the summer months so um like i've gone to see a number of uh, concerts outside in Parco and Pione throughout uh, June, July, over the set past <clears throat> six years. Completely free, uh, really nice music all, of all types. Like uh, my favorite one was probably um, a house uh, DJ just playing pretty much every night for a week, just in the middle of the park, just just because. And you know, a lot of dancers in the park, just completely out in the open and a really nice atmosphere but then the same could be said of um, other concerts where they've held like rap classical um, i've seen some areas where they even held like outdoor cinemas um, i think there was even one in san Babala not too long ago no i mean before covid uh, not too long before covid um, yeah so the so so the city actually holds a lot of these cultural events which i really really appreciate i think that's actually one of the best things about coming to live in the city is the amount that they um put on for their citizens completely free of charge it's really nice uh and so to kind of tie this into like the segue i'm going to make of transport like again like how easily accessible are these places because you know like here in rome sometimes we have incredible events but it's kind of like outside of the city and i don't want to take a 40 minute train um like how no most of these things are in the city center so if you're not living in like if you're not living too far out of the city center like i wouldn't say that i live too close to the city center but i can get there very easily because the uh, the metros and the trams are very um wide branching so they go to a lot of the areas outside of the city <clears throat> outside of the city um so it's quite accessible. I would say it's very accessible, in fact. Uh, like, it's not like they're holding these concerts on the outskirts of the city. Like, they're slap bang in the middle of the um, of Milan. And then coming onto your segue of transport. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, about the transport. Uh, one, like, okay, so I'm going to ask, what are the types you have, first of all? Mm. So, like, just very briefly. The types of transport you can get or like types held by the main transport body? No, 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 like what are the types of transport that you have, like tram, metro, like... So we oh, have... Maybe a summary. Mm-hmm. We have uh, underground trains, uh, overground trains, so like metro and then suburban lines. 
Uh, we have buses, we have trams, we have uh, car sharing, we also have bike sharing and scooter sharing, both the um, um, motorized vehicle scooters and the um, electric scooters. Um, what else do we have? I think that's about it. Okay. Do you have uh, night buses? We do. Yes, but it's just the it's the same it's it's the same bus route or line just done throughout the night, so it's not like a separate night bus per se. Um, yeah, the 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 ATM I can't remember the full name, but it's like the Agency of Transport for Milan. I think that's it. Um, they provide a service in which you can get like a monthly or yearly ticket and use pretty much yeah and you can use all of the services that they have on offer apart from the bikes and the cars so for this um subscription service you you pay if you're under if you're a student under the age of 27 you'll pay 22 euros a, a month i don't know what that is annually because there is a bit of a reduction if you pay annually but you um get completely um complete access to all of their services apart from uh, so so you can use the suburban suburban lines you can use the metro lines you can use the bus lines the trams um night buses everything is included in that pri uh, in that ticket um and uh, they also offer bike sharing is in cy cycle sharing and uh, they have also started to offer um they used to offer car sharing but they don't do that anymore they've got third parties for that but um, that's not included in that previous ticket that I mentioned, but they do offer that <clears throat> as an outside um, service. So the, the the bike sharing and stuff that's subsidized by the transport. Uh, yeah. The ATM as well. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, well, no, the 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 bike sharing and all of that is uh, they they have the uh, the bike sharing. They have their own uh, bike service but there are other bike services available but there all those other bike services and electric scooter services are subsidized by the city not necessarily the atm but the comune di milano will uh, has um apprised those for use okay because like here we have the electric scooters uh as well and we just got like well they tried to bring a bike service but it didn't work and then now uber has brought their own electric like uh bike share but it's, ah, it's not Ubers, a part of like huh? Yeah, like the Uber bikes. Um, oh, like we don't have those bikes. yet. Yeah, but like this has nothing to do with like Uber's a private company, so this this isn't anything to do with like the transport. Yeah, service. we we have the same. We have these private companies that have. Uh, there's been a couple, actually, a handful that have been in rotation. Um, it started with Lime. Uh, then we had. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's the scooter. Bike one. me. Yeah, they also do bikes now here. They started with scooters, oh, but now they've gone onto okay. bikes. And then we had. Um, Mobike was a big one here, uh, but no Uber bikes. But these are all, um, I don't know if they're subsidized, but they're at least um, checked off or allowed by the city because each bike, each scooter will have a sticker saying the community of Milan. So I don't know what that means, if anything, but. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, like, so because now I'm going to draw a comparison, not to Rome, but to Dublin, uh, mm -hmm. because in Dublin, we have like what are called the Coca-Cola bikes. And they're basically like a bike share service, but they're a part of like Dublin Council. Uh, so like you get them, like they're basically subsidized. It's a part of their transport system, but I think they're like mainly sponsored by Coca-Cola. So it's not like Uber where it's a private company providing all of the bikes and like it's Uber who's making the money. Like in Dublin, you pay the money to like Dublin technically. Mm -hmm. um, so like what the reason why I was asking uh, if the bikes were subsidized is because I was trying to understand if it was more like a Coca-Cola bike situation or an Uber <laughs> bike situation. Uh, we have both. So we do have one where it's um, not, uh, yeah, it's subsidized by the Transport City Agency of Milan, um, but it's separate from that previous ticket that I mentioned of like 22 euros for students. Um, there you pay, I can't remember, it's been so long since I've taken one of these out. Um, but unlike the Coca-Cola bikes, which I imagine you can just pick up and leave anywhere. 
the the Coca Cola bikes are a bit complicated because they have like stations around the city. Yeah, so it's, it's the same. It's the same for okay. the ATM bikes here. Actually, I have heard them being called Berlusconi bikes, which I thought was pretty funny. Oh, sorry, what? Berlusconi bikes. I've heard them being oh, called. Oh, Berlusconi. That. Yeah, sorry, you cut out for a second. I I, I thought you said Bottastoni. I was like, what? What um, is that? <laughs> so. But it's still really nice that the city itself provides bike share. Like you're, you're not yeah. dependent on private companies. And I think the reason why that's also nice is that it kind of tells me that I bet Milan has cycling paths and it's a lot more friendly to cycle in, as a city. There are cycle paths, but they're not abundant. Um, some areas have them more than others. Some areas are completely cobbled and horrible to cycle over. Um, but yeah, we do, we do, we do have um, cycle lanes, but they're not they're not ubiquitous. That's would the only issue. Would it be feasible to have a bike in Milan? Like, say, like a student, oh, yeah. because uh, you said that. Uh, it's just because I remember you saying that like Milan's a little bit outside of the city. I I have no idea how far or how close. So like, if if a student lives in city center, is it like feasible for them to bike to and from university every day? This like th not only distance wise, but like safety wise. So um, like a lot of the students who live in Piola or Cita Studi will cycle in um, because it's not too far. The roads are pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, no, the ro the roads are safe on the way to uni because the, if. Um, the, the, the roads themselves are wide enough that you're not just cramming two cars right next to each other. So there is space for two, two cars, two bikes. Um, failing that, the pavements are also quite wide from that area of the city to the university. So um, I would say that if you live in that area, it's pretty, it is feasible to do so. Um, outside of that area, say where I'm living, um, not, not at all because uh, some of the areas of the city are, are cobblestone, so it's very uncomfortable to ride, and riding on the pavements in these areas is also dangerous because the amount of people, or not dangerous, but also slow. Um, so it really depends on where you live, but yeah, it definitely is feasible, and a lot of students here do get bikes of their own. And buying your own bike in this city is actually really cheap if you know where to go, because uh, <laughs> there is a big problem with bike theft here, and the places that you buy them from probably uh, are places that are selling stolen bikes so oh okay yeah i mean it's just one of those okay, things but it is, supply and demand you can use a bike is the important point. yeah that's the important that's the that's the only bullet point that should have been there yeah uh and just to re uh like re-ask the monthly price of the all-inclusive transport ticket is around tw 22 euro you said right it's 22 euros at the moment until you're 27 years old. Once you hit 27 years old, the transport um, the transport agency doesn't consider you a student anymore and you have to pay the full price, which is 40 euros a month. Um, the price okay. the price of a single ticket for two hours. So, so you can buy a single ticket for two hours. Um, no, sorry, a, an hour and a half, which costs two euros. And you can use that ticket on any, any transport um, provided by the ATM apart from the bikes. Um, that ticket costs two euros, so if you deduce it out, if you're over the age of 27, it's not worth getting that, uh, that, that, that monthly ticket because you can just pay as you go and it'll be much cheaper. Um, also something yeah. I want to state is that uh, <laughs> if you're coming to the city, download the app because you can now buy tickets on the app rather than having to buy the tickets on um, like this at the station or at a tobacco shop um, and buying the ticket on the app doesn't use it straight away so what a lot of people do and i don't know if i should be saying this because i don't know oh, how maybe 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 we should leave it for another okay. video perhaps. i will leave it for another video then but <laughs> because... I, I know uh what you're going to say because i've seen people here do it as well which is have yeah. a ticket on hand and if an inspector gets on activate it bingo um because the, the fine here is quite ugh, it's nasty I've been yeah, hit by I, I was just, I was trying to look up, oh, here we go. The three zone tickets cost two euro and the four zone is 240. But okay, I mean, it's nice that it's 22. I don't like that it's based on age. 
yeah. rather than like student status. 40 euro is a little steep, but 22 mm. euro is pretty great considering that's going to basically be like the average age of most most uh, mm. students. I think that's very, very reasonable considering you have 24 hour coverage over the entire city, over all yeah. of the transport. Uh, like I'm sure like you're from the UK, I'm from Ireland. For us, that would be infinitely Unheard of. Yeah, yeah, it's unheard of where I'm from. Yeah. No, in, in, in Dublin, you're looking at about 3,000 euro a year just for buses. Um, and that's not even 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not even joking. Amount of money. Yeah, so I think that's a really fair price. And I think uh, we covered most of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, just two more things. And the first one is going to be, you mentioned like kind of uh, areas like if you live in this area, you can kind of get to the uh, to the university with bike, and if you so like speaking of areas, could you give kind of like a very like very brief introduction to the different areas in Milan and which are kind of like better for when you live in when you're going to university, which are better to kind of like avoid. Um, mm. As weird as it sounds, like could you give like no a no no, it, it's very necessary to have this discussion because there is crime in Milan yeah. um, so I want any student who comes here to be safe and that's very important because there are some areas of the city that you should not go during daylight <laughs> or night time so um, as a as a person who isn't Italian because you can get robbed you can get um, accosted so the main areas of the city if you're coming to visit or if you're coming to live will probably be the historical center not, not to live, but definitely to visit, is the historical center, which is Duomo, um, Castello di Sforza, um, San Babila, this kind of area where a lot of the yellow and red lines intersect. Um, but as a student to live, the main bottleneck for transport is going to be either the walk from a place called Cascina Goba to university, or um, on the opposite end, a bus called the 325, which drops you off near university, which can be taken from a place called Udine. So that's the two main bottlenecks. Um, and both of those two metro stops, Kishinagoba and Udine, are both on the green line. So most students will live on the green line, uh, like the green line metro stops, um, which is the number two metro, the green line. People will tend to live as close to that metro as possible because um, if that bottleneck is going to happen anyway, then the metro is fast enough that it doesn't matter really where you live um, on that green line. So for instance, I live almost at the opposite end of the um, the green line, the M2. And uh, my commute into university used to take about 30 to 45 minutes every day. Um, the most of which would be uh, that, um, that commute on the metro. Uh, but you can get to if you but, but but as I said before, sorry, the most students live in Piola or Chita Studi, which is also on the Green Line, and um, the commute there from there can be twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. <clears throat> Very few students, sorry, no. In the first year, a lot of students will live in in a private hotel, like just outside of the university, and then find private accommodation within um. the city. Sorry, I, so I just got up a map now and I'm showing it on screen uh, of the green line. So could you mm. just repeat which stop the university is at? Because I'm not familiar with Milan at all. So um, um, I can kind uh, of I'd, see like there's a like super center like Lanza, Cadorna. Yeah, Cadorna, so Cadorna Lanza. And then on the opposite end uh, towards the east, um, you'll, you'll see uh, almost at the very end, just before the fair line stops. I don't know if it's showing the fair line there. Like the sorry the the city line like it should be like a red bar. It's, there's a place called Cascino Goba. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can see Cascina Antonetta. Maybe I've gone. Oh yeah yeah okay I see it. Sorry sorry yep. Yeah, so Cascino Goba. A lot of people will. Uh, it's also where the San Raffaele um, hospital is, where a lot of the San Raffaele students will go to study. So ah, okay. um, yeah, we we get off at Cascino Goba and we walk for about five less than five minutes i would say to get to university uh, okay. actually you walk you walk through san Raffaele to get to university uh, the other place is udine which is uh, maybe three or four stops before kishina goba and yep. uh, at udine there'll be a bus called the 325 which a lot like which the majority of students who don't have a bike or a car will take to get to university and it will drop you off 
Um, again, maybe less than a five minute walk. Def no, definitely less than a five minute walk to university. But all of this is subject to change because we are meant to be moving to Naguada at some point. And that's a whole different bottle of fish. That's on the yellow or purple line. Um, I, 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 I really like the way Milan looks on this map. I'm not going to lie. I'm super I like vibing with it. <laughs> it's a really nice map. <clears throat> and we have another line coming in. Uh, the M4, the blue line. So we have the M1, the M2, the M3, and the M5. Now they're putting in the M4 for some reason. Because um, that's how numbers work. Um, <laughs> okay. and, uh, uh, yeah. Cool. So then regarding the areas, like which are the neighborhoods that... Uh... Right, yeah. So, so um, San Siro is a big one that people like to go to for, you know, obviously the football. Um, we have two big football teams in um, in Milan, and three big football teams are celebrated here. That's uh, Inter. I don't even know the names. AC Inter and Juventus are really supported here, but a lot of those supporters will live um, in San Siro, and it can get quite rowdy during game days. Like, in fact, for some reason, when I was walking through the city today, I just saw a bunch of banners that weren't there yesterday saying Inter Merda for whatever reason. So there's a lot of rivalry. There's a lot of beef, especially on game days around San Siro. So um, it can get quite noisy. It can get quite boisterous. Boisterous, and um, yeah, I would say just it's also really far from the place that the university is now. So there's not really much reason to go live there unless you're really into football. The other place that I would say that you should definitely not live, and a lot of people are going to cuss me out for this, is a place called Via Padova. Uh, Via Padova is um, just off, if you still have that map up, there's this metro stop called Loreto, which is an intersection between the green and the red line. Uh, I was I was just looking for a map of the neighborhoods to get up while you were talking about it, so <laughs> I, I unfortunately closed the last map. Uh, no, but, no okay, worries. So, but Via Padova is just a long street uh, coming from Loreto to, I actually don't know where, but... Um, that place has been notorious for a lot of robbings, shootings. Uh, last year, there was a, um, I don't know if it was an intentional fire, if it was like arsenal or whatever, but a whole building burnt down. Uh, there's oh. been stories of people like attacking each other with machetes on that street. Um, but it's very Jeez. spotty. Okay. That's the issue. Okay. Like some areas of that road, because it is a very long road, some areas of that road are much worse than others. I've had friends and I've visited friends a lot who lived on Via Padova and not have seen any problems. So um, I would say once you get from Cimiano, Crescensago, on, on the Via, like also on the Green Line, um, once you get to those areas parallel to Via Padova, it kind of gets it a lot um, less uh, sketchy. But just don't go there during the night, and you'll be okay. Other than that, um, we also have a really nice area called Chinatown, um, which is a really nice place to live. A lot of uh, Chinese restaurants, a lot of uh, Chinese bazaars. Do you call them bazaars? Stores. Um, with fantastic Chinese snacks and foods and all kinds of Japanese food as well, actually. Um, we also have... I, 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 though I wouldn't say live around there because it is also quite expensive because it's quite close to Garibaldi. And Garibaldi is also a very expensive place because it's the area where there's a lot of fashion going on. Um, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, business and economics um, is going on over there as well. So it can be quite expensive living on Corso Como or, or Garibaldi. Um, a lot of students live south. Uh, in between Naviglio and Porto Romana because there's uh, Bocconi University there as well. Um, so that can be a quite nice place to live. Um, and also Crocetta on the yellow line is um, quite a nice place to live because um, you're very close to the universe, the main campus university, which is Festa del Perdono. Um, so if you want to go study there during the day and then go, sorry, go to university and then go to study there afterwards. It's really nice to live there because it's also really close to um, Porto Romana, really close to Duomo. Um, it's a very nice place to live around there. Um, those um, are the main okay. places people tend to go. So like just, just as you were talking and I was trying to find a map, I just realized that like my, this might be like a good like standalone video. 
because uh, there's really so much. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And the, uh, like, there's a lot of varying opinions on this. Like, but this is just my yeah. my take on it. But a lot of people will say, "Yeah, be a part of this, fine. Go live there. It's all good." But I would I wouldn't touch that with a barge pole. Okay. Yeah, uh, definitely. Okay, could be so I, I say we should do a like a video on this where where actually, you actually have a map uh, mm. in front of you and you can actually show it because mm. it's it's kind of also very hard i think even like whoever is watching this right now are is probably like trying to furiously jot down like what neighborhoods you're mentioning and yeah. because because we don't edit these interviews like it's not like i can like bring up where you're talking about to make a list it also so. be it also been quite nice to see what the uh, milano the cock uh, what the humanitas and san rafaelis do yeah, say about yeah. about the city because i know at so, least I'm, some Manitas students live in the city center for sure yeah so and now that the interview is at one hour I'm, I'm I think that like we should kind of just like cut the topic here um and mm -hmm. ask the final bit because I know that's going to be a like a lot as well um okay. so like just try to be brief as possible and like I'm really sorry for these questions uh they seem no, really open but for. like they're they're all the things that I wish I knew coming mm -hmm. in um, but like now as you're talking, I'm like furiously getting more ideas like, no, like we should make a standalone video on this and we should expand more on this and we should write an article on this because yeah, yeah. I realize that this is going to be a lot to cover in uh, one interview. But just for the final thing, and I know we talked about how much we hate this question, um, but to give a very, very brief like understanding of the cost of living in Milan. Uh, <laughs> With the accommodation, we talked about the cost of the transportation, but I just want to kind of know like the cost of like eating out. And again, this of course depends on like if you go to student places or if you go like in the city center. And like I know it's really hard to answer these questions, but like if you could give like a very brief like cost of living for groceries, eating out, and accommodation, and we can tie up the end of the interview and be forever grateful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, accommodation um, is probably the big ticket item on that list. Um, it's the one I at least get asked the most. Um, and it, and the answer I always give is it varies. It varies a lot uh, depending on what you want and uh, where you want it. Um, there's a system, I don't know if you have it in Rome, but we, we use the monolocali, bilocali, trilocali um, kind of nomenclature for um, describing rooms. If you're living on your own, this is how a lot of them are going to be described. Um, and that just basically tells you every room that you have in, in that apartment outside of the toilet. So monolocali, it's going to be the toilet, and then everything else is going to be in another room, your living space, your kitchen, your um, <clears throat> that's it. Uh, so be locally two rooms plus a toilet etc so the price really depends on that as well as the area as well as the amenities um, of the apartment and how old it is how well kept it is so there's a lot of variables to this but i do know people personally who have uh, who are living with um, flatmates for instance flatmates and roommates who are paying like 200 euros rent a month uh, excluding bills so they pay bills on top of that um, and then I also know people who are paying one thousand. But that's 1, for like a private room. Uh, they okay. So so one of the guys he was he had a uh, room share with another bloke, um, but then this summer they put a partition um, in between the two rooms um, like a proper wall, and now he's got his own room for the same price. So oh okay, that's quite nice. It's really nice. But then I know another person um, who's living. Um, like in his own room, but in a shared apartment for the same price anyway. Um, wow, okay. And this is in the same area in uh, Chita Studi. So the first one is living in Pio yeah, Piola Chita Studi. The other one was living in, uh, in Via Padova. And then actually there's sorry, three people. There's another one who is also still living in Chita Studi who is paying around 250 a month, but lives with like seven people. But then on the opposite end of the scale, I know people that's, who live that's alone. So many. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just a lot of people. Um, I know some people who have lived in Centrale, again, with like seven other people um, paying 400 euros a month. I know some people who um, live on their own uh, for like 900 a month in a really nice apartment um, with all their bills included. And then the other thing you need to worry about is uh, condominium fees as well, which are sometimes included, sometimes not. So that can be a bit of a... Um, a shock when you 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 have to pay your rent and then your landlord's like okay yeah now pay me the condominium fees as well so always check that you don't want to get caught short uh, so so when it comes to rent it really varies but um, 
there is the, they also work on an estate agent premises for the most part at least um most most places will uh, be letting through estate agents which means you pay the estate agent to find you the apartment and then they don't do anything after that pretty much um but then there are uh companies in which you will pay like estate agent fees but all they do is pay you with a landlord and then um it's much cheaper that estate agent fee in fact it's a one-off payment and then um everything you deal with the, uh, the apartment with is dealt with straight with the landlord um so that's another way to cut down costs um then food food can be Again, it's the same situation. If you go and buy from, say, um, Carrefour every week, your your shop is going to be much more expensive than, say, if you go to the street markets, which are held every week, and just do your shop there. Because I didn't mention this before, but there are um, street markets every week scattered throughout the city where you can buy fresh produce, fresh um, chicken and meats and, and what have you, clothes, laundry, detergents or the amenities that you need in the house you can buy in these places and it will be significantly cheaper than if you bought buy them in the uh, common shops like Esselunga, uh like little maybe not little but for the same quality if not sometimes better um, so the only issue sorry is that they're only held like in that one location once a week and then another location once a week so um you have to kind of catch them at the right time but finding fi buying food for the house is quite cheap like i spend around 200 euros a month on food alone and that is on the upper end of what people will actually spend on food um eating out can be quite expensive but again it depends on where you go there are some restaurants which are uh, notorious for being um, cheap but you get amazing food from what you buy um, and some areas which are, uh, some, sorry, some restaurants which are like notoriously just expensive for the sake of being expensive, but you know, the quality there is quite nice still. I can't really name any off the top of my head. Like there's left, I, I don't know if you want examples, but there is like a steak place not too far from mine, which is really expensive, really nice. But then if you go a bit further down, it's crazy. If you just go like five minutes down the Navillo, you find this, um, I think it's world renowned. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I've heard a couple of people talk about it, but you can find this um, sandwich making shop, which does um, steak sandwiches at the same level of quality as the steaks you get in that other place, but significantly cheaper. So there's a lot of these places um, dotted around. My favorite being Lugno near Milano, uh, near the Duomo, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of different places to eat for a variable prices um and I same mean, with drink i think again with like eating out and stuff i i do feel like it's really dependent on the student like are you going to eat in mostly mm -hmm. like student places like i the other day found for the first time ever this place in, a, in our student neighborhood and you get like a pasta meal for 350 which is so cheap and but like the thing is like most people aren't going to eat there so i, I do think it kind of um depends on you but I just wanted to ask because like you seem to like maybe I'm wrong but like you don't seem to live on like the very very like super budgeting or like super super lavish so no, in I'm very your flat back in the middle. yeah which is actually perfect so what would you say is like if you had to tell students like this is how much money a month and you could live very comfortably like I'm just not saying like eating, just for eating and drinking no 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 no, like no 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 like eating everything. drinking rent and I, i'm saying like to live comfortably like i'm not just saying like uh you know like you're going to eat out every day and you're going to go to a restaurant every day but like kind of of the opinion that like you could get a coffee on campus every day you, you know what i mean where like mm -hmm. like i know this is a really hard question but like to have a private room not necessarily live by yourself but having a private room you can get to university easily and you're live modestly but comfortably like what would you say is like a very like perfect monthly number um i know it's a really odd question but excuse me um no 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 it's a i'm glad you put those parameters in there for us it would have been a bit more difficult but um so okay so that student that you just described would be living in piola they would have their own room they would probably buy their own bike so they don't pay for transport 
um, and then to live comfortably eating out, let's say uh, once or twice a week. I would yeah, say once perfect. a week is probably good enough, but let's say you want to be a bit, bit more lavish and say twice a week. I would put you in the ballpark of hmm, anywhere between 700 to 900, including rent. Like that includes the rent. 700 and to 900 bills. a month. And yeah. the bills on top, yeah, actually 700 to 900. That's honestly pretty decent. Um, mm. I mean, I know I talked about this with you before, but Milan is actually so much cheaper than I thought it would be. Um, mm. So, like, I think that's perfect to, like, give students kind of an estimate to live comfortably because the truth is, like, you can always dial back or you can always, uh, yeah. like, take, like, do more, I guess. But, okay, 700 to 900. I think that's, like, a really good number for students to work with and understand, like... Mm. Uh, because so so just to break down my working there yeah, just so perfect. people know yeah. like so if you're living in Piola I'm setting the rent at maybe four hundred and then I'm putting on an extra two hundred for groceries and then an extra uh, one hundred for um, uh, spares for bills and stuff um, per month which realistic realistically won't be that expensive but just in case and then the extra two hundred. Um, just eating out every week, we'll pro uh, every once a week would probably run you up to uh, once or twice a week would definitely twice a week would run you up to about two hundred a month. Like right? because yeah. if you're going out for drinks, aperitivo, um, having a coffee, or if you're buying lunch at university every day, then you know it it can get to that level. Yeah, honestly, I think seven hundred seems very reasonable. If you if you base because like if you asked me the same question. Uh, basing rent and bills on about 500 euro a month on average, like both included for a private room. Mm. I would say that like, I think 700 to 900 is very like decent. Like you will live very comfortably on 700 mm. to 900. Um, I'm not saying it's achieve, like, I'm not saying it's easy to achieve because no, it, it takes a lot of searching and it takes a lot of, um, talking to people and like knowing what's out there before you can even get to that 400 price in piola like it is it, i'm not saying it's easy to get that price but you you can find it if you put in enough elbow elbow grease and leg work yeah uh, yeah like just for instance okay so i i lived in a place called porta venetia which is a really nice place and i lived there for 500 euros uh, a month but it was a horrible place to live um uh, oh. but i found it I, I was living there for a year and it was cheap it was cheap because it is cheap um but then down the road um literally a 10 minute walk uh, i had a friend who i would visit quite often who was living there for 650 so and her place was much nicer than mine okay um, yeah it's so very it, highly dependent yeah yeah that's that's the if there's one thing you take from the, this discussion is that it is very variable it's very variable and you just have to keep searching until you find what's right because you will that's the thing because it's so varied you will find what's right for you yeah i think that's fair and honestly i think that like cover that was also like i think a very super deep dive on basically everything um yeah. regarding the city and you uh which is very important so i hope that like people actually get a lot of value out of this and if you are still all the way here watching uh let us know in the comments or what else you would like us to do videos and interviews on etc etc all the good youtuber mm. stuff um, maybe we should let them know what's coming up like you have this idea to have um discussions of uh, between one student and another from two different universities, which I think oh, would be okay. quite... Oh, okay, yeah. So I guess if, if people did make it this far in the video, they have a right to know of our upcoming yeah. content. Uh, yeah. So we do plan on doing an interview from ev from with a student from every single university uh, to give them an idea, again, of like not only the university, but of the city. We would also like to be able to do it with like like a senior like yourself and then with like a super freshman like a first or second year and just to kind of see like how the course has evolved but also like uh how they handle different situations so i think that would be a really interesting but the main thing that rosh was just talking about is that we would like to have two students from two different universities have a uh would you say a moderated conversation not moderated but directed conversation so yeah. that 
yeah, direct, students I think would be can get an idea, like if you're stuck between choosing between two universities to have two students from those universities talk about the different aspects to help students like better understand what decision is going to be right for them. And like, I think our conversation was basically a pretty good one between Sapienza and Milan, where it's not that we were really comparing, but we were like showing that the main differences aren't in the university, but more so like in the city, kind of like Rome is a lot more chaotic. Um, and the main similarities as well. Yeah, and the similarities. So like, it, it's not going to make a huge, I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't make a huge difference in the end. But basically, <laughs> yes, uh, some of the upcoming videos that we will have is like more student interviews, but also uh, directed conversations between two students of two different universities. So if you have two universities that you're stuck between, Letting us know in the comments is the best way for us to be able to facilitate that because we'll actually be able to find students from those universities. And, and any, other, any other questions you want answered, yep. let us know. Yep. And also on the, you can come from the website or in the comments. Discord or... as well. Oh, wait. No. Yeah. No oh, Discord, yeah. We're so reachable. <laughs> no Discord. Shh, shh, that's secret. <laughs> secret. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Uh, I guess we're going to say goodbye to you guys and see you in the Bonsera. next interview.